we're in the middle of a series we call Life Values. We're looking at different values that especially Jesus followers are to have embedded in our lives in order to be all that God has called us to be. I want to read two verses from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. And uh, let's see what the Apostle Paul has to say to us on this day. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. Give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let me say it again. Because of all he's done for you. Why don't you say it with me? Say it in blue. Come on, together. Because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Amen. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. God, we pray you'll do a special work uh, in our minds and in our hearts as we listen both here and uh, video and podcasts. Just work supernaturally, would you? In Jesus' name we pray. Shout amen. 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 Please be seated. When, we, when I laid this series out, I didn't really recognize the intersection of this particular value, which is about sacrifice. Everybody shout, sacrifice matters. <laughs> and this particular day. We are uh, simply one week on the other side of remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and have lost their lives in, in combat fighting to help keep us safe as a nation. And as Pastor Tilden pointed out, we're in the middle of celebrating graduations all over the place, from elementary school to graduate school, from GEDs to PhDs to voc tech uh, certification. This is a season of graduation and celebration. I can't think of a better day to talk about the value of sacrifice. Somebody shout sacrifice. sacrifice. You know, in a lot of churches on a day like today, you get a chance to, uh, you have a graduation kind of service gathering where you talk uh, to the graduates. We don't do that typically here, but I'm going to do a little of that today and talk to all of us because we can all learn a little something about this notion of sacrifice. The first point I want to make is that uh, this text given to us by the Apostle Paul, underscores that sacrifice really does matter. And it begins with God himself. Let's look at this verse again, verse 12, verse 1. Notice this. It says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies, and by that, uh, in the Greek context, he's really talking about the totality of your life, to God, I'm going to skip this, I'll come back to it, let them be a living and holy, everybody shout, sacrifice, the kind that, will find, you'll, that he will find acceptable, this is truly the way to worship. Why, why, why? Somebody shout, why? why? Right here, because of all he has done for you, because of his great sacrifice. Let me point out here that This is chapter 12. Paul uses the entire first 11 chapters of the uh, uh, book of Romans to make a basic, powerful, and simple point. And that is that God's work to redeem the world and to bring salvific relationship, to include you and I in a relationship with him that saves us in time and eternity required a great sacrifice from God and a great sacrifice from his son, Jesus. Somebody shout sacrifice. 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 Let me just give you some samples straight out of the book. Uh, Chapter 3, verse uh, 10. Paul makes the point about all of us. He says, he's quoting from the psalmist. He says, as the scripture says, "Not, not any of us are righteous. No, not one. Tell the person next to you, that, that includes me. That includes me. <laughs> that at the end of the day, all of our best efforts are undercut by the brokenness of our nature. So we can't save ourselves. And then 
Uh, he goes on to say in verse 24, yet God, somebody shout, yet God, freely and graciously declares that we are righteous. And he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. What's the penalty for our sins? It's ultimately death. Well, how does that, how does that work? How does he free us? Well, then it's in chapter uh, 5, verse uh, 6. Here's what he, Paul teaches us. When we were utterly helpless, somebody shout powerless, Christ came at just the right time, and he pays a penalty that we can't pay, and he dies for us sinners. Now turn to the other person and say, I'm so glad that includes me. And what is fascinating and remarkable about the Christian faith it's not replicated in any other religious tradition anywhere on the planet and any other culture. And every culture talks about sacrifice, but, but, but it's always how first and last the sacrifice begins with us sacrificing to a God to please the God. But what Paul says is that in order for God's plan of salvation to sweep and sweep us up and save us, that it is God and it is His Son who makes the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me first. I think that's good news. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. That's a big deal. So, the first insight is obviously sacrifice, from God's perspective, matters. The second thing I think that this insight, because of what God has done for us, this is what Paul is saying, uh, the insight flows that all that is good and accomplished in the world requires sacrifice. So, let me just say a word for some of you who may be in the midst of great sacrifice. You, you are uh, an adult child taking care of an aging parent. You, you are a uh, parent who's sacrificing greatly so that kid can get through college. You are a spouse uh, walking with your spouse through a, a, a season of great sickness and illness. I just want to tell you, God sees you. God is smiling on you. And that God will bless your sacrifice. He'll bless your sacrifice. So hang in there. Come on, somebody shout, hang in there. And for some of the rest of us here, some of our young people and older people at, 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 in the same vein who have great uh, appetite for big dreams but very little stomach for sacrifice, I just thought that I might remind you that all that is good and accomplished in the world requires sacrifice. The bigger the dream, the greater the sacrifice required of you and of me. Somebody shout sacrifice. Sacrifice. Nothing comes cheap. All that is good and accomplished in the world requires sacrifice. It's clear that if God, in order to achieve his dream of salvation and redemption for the world, that's a sacrifice. What about you? What about me? So what is it you're dreaming about? You want a world that is more just, more equitable, equitable across class and race and gender? What, 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 what is it that you're dreaming about? A world that's more safe in light of what happened just a couple of days ago? Do you want a world that's, that's, that's more Loving? How badly do you want that world? Well, the, the, the ultimate answer is that in order to get that world, it requires self sacrifice. Of course, sacrifice. Or maybe it's about you, you came here wondering about how to improve your life. And you're trying to get to the next level. Trying to get to the next level financially. Praying to get out of debt. Trying to get to the next level educationally. Trying to get to the next uh, level in terms of the grades that you earn. Or, 
uh, 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 the degree that you're pursuing. You're, 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 you're trying to get to the next level on your, on your job, in your career pursuit. I, I, I don't know. You're, you're, you, maybe you came in here praying that God would, would set you free from some, some addiction that is consuming your life, of, of break you loose of, of, the, of the gravitational pull of some codependency. Or maybe you came in here saying, God, you know what? I need to step it up when it comes to my health. I, I, I need to lose just a few more... Or, or maybe, maybe it's, God, I, I need to gain some more muscle mass so I can look like Pastor Herman. <laughs> Whatever the prayer is for self-improvement, for growing, to getting to the next level, it will require what? Sacrifice. It will require sacrifice. Now, here's an insight. It comes straight out of this notion. Because of what God has done for us, Paul says. We know this to be true. The world has hope. I know what we read in the headlines. I know what the TV is reporting, but I'm telling me, listen to me. The world has hope because Jesus was willing to sacrifice greatly. Now, listen, listen to this. Beautiful text. Same one who writes Romans, the le- writes also the, the letter to the uh, church in Ephesus, Ephesians uh, and 5, 2. Here's what he says. Listen to this. He's talking to people who would be Jesus followers. He says this. So, live a life filled with love. Really, the, the text suggests overflowing with love. Following the example of Christ, meaning Jesus Christ. Watch this. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. All right, now here's what I want you to do. Watch this text. Draw a straight line from deep love. He loves us to, watch it, great sacrifice. See, that, it always works that way. Deep love, great what? Who offered himself as a sacrifice. Now, here's where somebody's going. Here's where I'm going to try to turn the light on for somebody. Because I can hear you. I can hear your thoughts. I can hear you. Somebody's thinking, well, Pastor, thank you. But listen, let me just tell you, I just graduated with a degree. I, uh, come on, now, I've just, I've just got my promotion. You don't have to tell me about sacrifice. I live in Silicon Valley. I, I, I got the way I got to because of sacrifice. But watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Straight line from deep love. Say deep love. Great sacrifice. Say great sacrifice. Watch it, watch it. For others. He offered himself as a great sacrifice, not for himself, but for us. And that became an aroma of worship that pleased the Father. So let me ask you. I know you're in Silicon Valley. I know that you work hard. I know that you are sacrificing so you can get that next house. You are sacrificing. I get it so that you can live in that neighborhood. I know you're sacrificing so you can go from a five-figure to a six-figure, maybe, maybe, maybe a seven-figure. I get it, but how much are we sacrificing for others? That's what changes the world. That's what creates community of health and and healthiness. That's what helps to make the place safe. Sacrificing, not just for me, but when I sacrifice for family, sacrifice for neighbors, sacrifice for my teammates at work. Can somebody say others? Let me give you uh, two definitions for sacrifice that I like. One, I stole, and the other, I created. The first one, I stole. Uh, here's the definition of sacrifice. 
uh, 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 put it up there. First one is uh, we give up what we love for what we love even more. Here's another definition. Here's mine. When we make a choice of sacrifice, we choose towards suffering for the higher good of the other. Let me illustrate it. One of my favorite movies these days, and by the way, it's an iconic movie, and it's only been out, I think, about a year. It's a trip. Uh, it's, it's called Crazy Rich Asians. If you've seen that movie, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Let me just see. See, all of y'all seen the movie. So y'all agree with me. It's an awesome movie. It's a trip, all right? So, so, so I love this movie. It, it illustrates this point in a powerful way. Now, let me just, in, in case you haven't seen it in a while, let me help you to remember. Uh, the lead person is a woman named Rachel Chu. And uh, she's an economic teacher at the University of New York. She's dating a guy by the name of Nick Young. He's tall and handsome. She thinks he's poor because he's got to borrow money from her for computers and all this kind of stuff. But it doesn't matter. He's a great guy. And he's from Singapore. And one day he says, look, I actually want to marry you, but I got to take you home and meet my family. This is cool. Gets on the plane, begins to figure something is a little funny because they're riding first, first class. And they get to Singapore. She finds out he's a part of the wealthiest family, one of the wealthiest families on the planet. Now, here's where it gets really, really interesting. Um, keep in mind, I'm talking about sacrifice. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, she meets his mother, Eleanor. You remember her name. And, and Eleanor, watch it, is a Jesus follower. We know she's a Jesus follower because when she's introduced, when she first comes on the scene, she's in a Bible study group that's meeting in her home. And they're studying Paul's letters. Fascinating. Somebody shout Jesus follower. And yet, because Rachel is the daughter of a single mom, watch this, Eleanor concurs, concludes, Rachel is not good enough for her son. Now, I say this every time I get a chance. I'm just going to drive it home. This is why we got to be grace-filled and forgiving people and, and sensitive people. But here's the reality. Watch this. Say this with me. Say, hurt people hurt people. Because if you know anything about Eleanor, you know that when she married her husband, her mother-in-law thought and still thought that she wasn't good enough. So she says to this singer, you're not good enough for my son. And did I mention she was a Jesus follower? Did I mention that? <laughs> I saw, did I mention she studied the scriptures? Did I, did I mention that on a weekly basis? Uh, and, and we don't know anything about Rachel's faith. It never says anything about her faith. But I do note that her name is Rachel. You know who Rachel is, the biblical character. Rachel is the wife of Jacob who ultimately would, would give her life in giving birth to her second child, Benjamin. And I just, I don't know who wrote it, but I just think that the writer probably had a little something in mind, you see. Because I think Rachel is really the Jesus character in the, in the in other words, she has the heart. How do you know, Herman? Oh, I like how you ask your questions. She loves Nick, but she invites her mother-in-law to be to a little meeting and then over a game. I, don't, I can't pronounce the name of the game. There you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fast. And, and, and the mother thought she had won, but Rachel in the last move said, no, I beat you. And then Rachel does, in light of what God has done for us, sacrifice. Rachel says to her mother-in-law, I love your son, and I love him so much that I can't bear to come between him and his family. So I'm going to give him 
not because I have to, because that's not love. Come on now. But because I love him, somebody shout love. Deep love, straight line, great sacrifice. What? For others, not for me. I don't give him up because I love him. Come on. And, and a year from now, when he marries somebody that you think is good enough, know that it was my love that made it possible. <laughs> I wish I had time. I just preached that, but I don't have time, y'all. I don't have time. I, 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 it's, 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 it's Jesus' love that has, has made our lives possible. That's what Paul says with great sacrifice. Therefore, we ought to be, we Christians, Jesus followers, we ought to live lives that are willing to offer great. You know how it ends. I love it. It's a fair book ending. If I had written it, I would have wrote it similar. <laughs> she, she cried all night. Cried for days. Heartbroken. The call, sacrifice calls, you know. And she goes on the plane trying to find a seat. Somebody comes stumbling through the other aisle. Looks up, it's him. He has to help people, but he's trying to get to her. He's stumbling over folk, but he's trying to get to her. Finally, he gets down in front of her. Oh, I love this. Gets on the knees, and he opens, watch it, the ring, the box, and says, I don't care. I want you. I'm going to marry you. And it's the ring of the family. <sighs> Two quick insights that I got to share with you. <laughs> Some of y'all sacrifice and you think God doesn't see you. Some of you sacrifice and you're crying all night long and you think it's a waste. I just want to tell you that, 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 that weeping may endure for the night, but, 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 but there comes the morning, y'all. Come on. God has a way and he can be depended on by and by. He'll bless your sacrifice. First insight, first insight. First. But then the second insight whew, is even better than that. Second insight, he shows the ring. It's the family ring. You know how he got it? Because the mother changed her heart. When you sacrifice for God, come on now, and you do it God's way, God will use your sacrifice to make the world better. Because most people haven't seen an example like that till they meet you. Because of what he's done for us. Wow. Um, let me, here's a parenthesis. Then I'm going to hasten to conclude this thing. Somebody shall sacrifice. Last week, Pastor Tilden was preaching about prayer. He was preaching about audacious shamelessness. I loved it. I said, all week I prayed audaciously shameless prayers. <laughs> and and, and he, he pointed out, watch me, that we're praying prayers about folk we're trying to date. Now, some of y'all, you've been swiping right and left. <laughs> and you keep coming up with it. You swipe right, it's the wrong person, left, it's the wrong person. There's a missing ingredient. Right now, now you, the, the, you, you, I've heard some of y'all prayers, and it's okay. Go ahead and pray. So, I, I, I want seven figure. F I want, you got to have a seraph. So she has seven figure saddle. Okay, okay, go ahead and pray that. Oh, got to be tall. I don't want to be with nobody who's, who's up. No, oh, go ahead and pray that. Got to be fine. I ain't going to be with nobody not fine. Got to be fine. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and pray that. But can I just point out that none of that is a character trait. Characters, who am I in the dark? Characters, who am I when nobody's looking? Come on now. Do you know that she can earn a seven-figure salary and still cheat on you? Come on now. All right, all right. So let me give you a character trait. I'm going to help somebody. You want somebody who has the heart 
of Rachel. Who, by the way, has the heart of Jesus. You want to determine this person that I'm dating. Does she or he have the capacity to sacrifice greatly for others? That'll tell you a little bit about what kind of daddy going to be. That'll tell you a little bit about what kind of wife she's going to be. That'll tell you a little bit. It's not just about folk you're dating. Come on now. It's about who's going to be your friends or not. That'll tell you if they will sacrifice greatly for others, you might want them for a friend. Come on now. It's about who I'm going to go into business with. If they will sacrifice greatly for others, I might want them as a business partner. Come on, come on, man. Because that thing, sacrifice greatly for others, is a powerful character reveal. Oh, ask the person next to you, are you listening? Wake up. I don't want you to miss this point. This is like the most important point. Get this point. Listen. While you look for it in others, do you know others are looking for it in you? For some of you, you want to go to the next level in your relationship? Come on now. You, you really want a promotion on your job? You really want to shine? Well, let me just suggest to you, well, why don't you adopt a mindset that says that I'm going to be known by how I sacrifice for others? There it is. Ask the person next to you. Say, tell them, say, check your sacrifice barometer. Check, check. Can you push it? All right, let me finish this thing. So, second point. So, because of what he, God, has done for us, great sacrifice to save us. Number two, Jesus followers, I'm talking to Jesus followers, you're not, just, this is a good insight for you to listen and imitate. But Jesus follows, Jesus follows to live holy and sacrificial lives, watch this, for God. All right, let's look at it in the text. I'll put it back up there, verse 1. Here it is. And so, I plead with you. The world depends on it. The trajectory of your family depends on it. The safety of the community depends upon it. I plead with you, Jesus followers. Would you give your bodies total lives to God because of all he's done for you? Let them be living in holy sacrifices, the kind that he'll find acceptable. This is, this is really the highest form of worship. Living with a value for sacrificing for others has real world consequences. Let me tell you a story. 2006, uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. There's an Amish community there. Some fellow who's been nursing a grudge for 20 years goes into a school, puts the boys out, keeps the girls, kills five girls between ages of 7 and 11 in the light of what happened a couple of days ago. Listen. And then kills himself. The world and the country is shocked. The Amish community, Christian community, uh, not only do they surround the parents of the kids who've been lost in this horrendous evil act, but they also go and surround the mother of the shooter and the wife of the shooter. And they say to the mother and the wife, we're going to walk with you through this. Watch me now. Watch me. America exploded. At the end, the verdict that went into the editorial papers all over the country was this. Some people say, I can't understand it. But others said, this reveals the best of what it means to be an American. Three years later, three sociologists 
does an analysis of the community in the context of our culture. Then they write a book, the Amish, Grace. And here's the point they make. Watch this. They point out that America, given today's culture, cannot produce wholesale people like these. Because the culture today, think about Silicon Valley, is a me first culture. To forgive folk who kill your kids requires self-renunciation. It requires self-sacrifice. And what the sociologist wrote is that the Amish community would not have been able to do it but for the fact that they were Christians inside of a belief that Jesus had self-sacrificed himself for them, died, come on now, and on the cross as he was dying, he says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And then, and then later he would argue, pick up your cross if you're my followers and, and learn the method of, of forgiveness and self-sacrificing. Come on now. Uh, uh, and, and what he's saying is that, 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 that the Amish because they were Jesus followers and they believed his sacrifice saved them that they became practitioners and guess what acting like Jesus saved them why because the average community would have been so full of anger and hate they would have kicked that wife and that mama out but the forgiveness of God made them immune. Oh, come on now. Just listen to this. Uh, here we are in a fractionalized political culture that is so poisonous that when the shooting happened two days ago and it's happening so frequently, come on now, by somebody who has also had a grief with somebody else and he went to the job and shot and that's more and more frequent. That's what our culture is helping to produce. Uh, 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 here we are, the news person say, it's the worst shooting since November. Not the whole, not, not November, y'all. What the sociologist says, basically, there's one institution in the Western world that is still assigned with the responsibility of raising up hundreds of millions of people like the Amish. It's called the church. Oh, might we become so full of Jesus. Oh, might we become so full of his love, so full of his forgiveness that we'll start acting differently and living, come on now, holy and sacrificial lives. Yes. Holy, shout holy. You know what that means. That means that your life, the moment you say, well, Jesus, Father, has been set aside for the purpose of, of, of for, for, for God's purpose working in the world. It means if it's, it's not holy. Come on, it means that, that not only has it been set aside, it means that you've made a decision that your life will be governed by the love of God, by the wisdom of God, by the light of God. And here is a question that you'll find yourself asking again and again as a Jesus follower. Before, you, I know they used to say, ask, uh, what would Jesus do? And that's a good question, but I'm going to give you another question. Before you do what you're thinking about doing, ask, can I do that and represent Jesus? Before you go where you think about going, ask, can I go there and represent Jesus? Because the texts teach us that Jesus' followers are ambassadors for Christ. Jesus has called you to be a part of helping to change the world. Oh, it says, holy and sacrifice. Watch this. Shout for God. Ooh, that's an insight. Don't miss it. That for God is important. You see, if you remove God out of the equation, it's possible for you to be sacrificing for others. But the problem is, if you're not doing it for God, you end up doing it for your own glorification. And a good thought gets corrupted by your broken nature. Out for God. You got to live for one that's higher than you, a purpose that's greater than you, a redemptive purpose in the world, not perfectly, but faithfully. Somebody shout, thank God for sacrifice. Whew. Let me end it here. Wow. Then the text says, verse 2, put verse 2 up there. 
Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you to a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn how, what God's will is, etc. Here's what I get from this. Listen to this. Christians are never to be concerned about fitting in. Our concern is about standing out. <laughs> Steph Curry, mother, you know I've been following the Warriors recently. <laughs> and his mother did a report about how she raised her kids. She said this, I got them up every morning at 6 a.m. They had to do spiritual devotion, Bible devotion, because I wanted them to know God first. And then I wanted to know every hard-working person gets up early. And then she said on Wednesday night, they was in church. On Friday night, they were in church. On Sunday, they were in church. She said when they came to me and said, but my friends, she said, I wanted them to learn that they could not fit in. They could stand out and be okay. So every week I said, no, I don't care what your friend's doing. You this, 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 this. She said, and my hope was that when they became adults and they were on their own, they would know, this is my words now, that Christians don't try to fit in. Their job is to stand out. And that when you stand out, you can be okay. See, because sometimes you stand out by sitting out. Young people, listen to me. You, don't, no, you, you can't participate in what the crowd is doing because if you participate, you know it will break the heart of God. So you sit out. There's a cost that's called sacrifice. For other people, come on now, we're called to stand out by standing up, speaking out for the little person, speaking out for the marginalized, speaking out for where we see it. And sometimes we're, we're doing it all by ourselves. And there's a cost. But I just stopped by to tell you, come on now, that whenever we dare to stand out, for Jesus, he stands out with us. Yeah, let's turn this. Here's Hebrews 6, 13, 16. I love this verse. Put it in the NLT version. Put it up here. Don't forget to do good and share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that people please God. You don't have to start with the big stuff. You know what the text says? Start sacrificing to fill needs now. Some people have some needs that requires you to sacrifice generously. Do that. Some people need forgiveness. Sacrifice and do that. Some people need uncommon hospitality. Be the first to welcome the newcomer at your job, the first to welcome the newcomer to the church, the first to welcome a newcomer to your small group. Some people need a friend, and you have a burning appointment, but because you're talking to her or him, you realize they need a friend, and so you cancel your appointment and you stay. That's the sacrifice. Here's how the NLT, here's how the message version translates that same verse. It says, make sure you don't take things for granted and go slack in working for the common good. Share w w what you have with others. God takes particular pleasure, to particular, say particular pleasure, in acts of worship. What is that? A different kind of sacrifice. What do you mean? The kind that takes place at your kitchen table, at the workplace, and on the street. Oh, may God give us that kind of heart for those kind of lies. Give God a hand, praise.